It would be nice to look at these poles while you're still working, if I can ask you. Will it be good to look at these poles and, and know that you had something to do with these poles? Hands on. Um, yes, definitely. Uh, just gonna, it's going to have an everlasting uh, memory. And um, the pitches, what I'm going to do is, um, the different pitches I'm going to put in her, in her archives. Um, some of it with the blacks in government and others. Uh, I've got, uh, now that my daughter's graduated, uh, I'm going to use her room as a guest room. And uh, I'm going to use the guest room as a memorabilia room. I'll have pictures and other artifacts relating to my wife and 9-11 in it. Uh, While you're carving away, is this one thing that can help you move forward? Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, it um, woke up my anger, you know, and I, I thought it was okay coming out of the room, but I was full of anger, and I'm sorry. And uh, I look forward to Earl, where we can maybe have somebody leave us rare. So, gives me uh, joy um, knowing that uh, my sweat of, of drip sweat on this pole uh, and um, a, a pole that is very um, dignified and represent uh, their memory uh, all 184 um, the memory of all 184 victims, um, both on the Pen in the Pentagon and also on Flight 77. Put more of an angle into it, like this. So that your, your blade's cutting down into it, uh -huh. and then draw it. Okay. Okay, how are you going to be sitting tired? I want you to be able to dress them and okay. still be on mic. Okay, like this. I usually sit up like this, don't I? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll be like this, talking to them. Do you want my headphones on? Do you need to hear me? Am I having it too, am I putting it too low usually? No, you sit okay. fine. Okay, good. Um, three questions I want to ask, make sure they're okay to ask, okay? Is the totem pole a living being? Yes. Okay, nope, that's okay to ask? I lost you here. Oh, okay. He lost you too. Oh, okay. Um, they'll be, they're, they're working on our okay. sound right now, yeah. Yeah, we believe they're brought to life. Okay. Uh, they have a destiny to talk. Okay. And once their eyes are completed, and then they, they wake up. Is the eye the last thing you do? Uh, no, we actually did them early and we're having a little bit of problems, and so we had to bring some elders in to take care of that. And so now the eyes are covered. Until they get to their destiny, their eyes are covered. Oh, okay. So, Okay, that's really, I'm loving this because those of us who are down here, and there's no offense in this, but those of us that come from down this area, it's art for us. We yeah. see it as art, but for you, Yeah, it's... but when we get back to the uh, foundations of art, we find out that it was used for song, dance, and ceremony, and has a sacred uh, symbolic significance to the culture, yeah. and traditional teachings are tied to it. Okay. Wayne, you want to be about a hands like the way? Okay. <laughs> You know, I, I lost a daughter that was 19. Uh, she got ran over, and then I lost a son that, when he was 19. He got ran over several years later. And so I know what grief is. 
and I know that it takes a lot to heal. Oh, okay. Do I call these poles or totems? Uh, or both? To totem, get a, poles. totem poles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it disrespectful to call it just one? Just a totem or a pole? <coughs> This is the Thursday, September 9th edition of Native America Calling. In July of this year, work began on two totem poles to be delivered to Washington, D.C. on September 19th, where the public will be able to see them. Now, these two totems, the Liberty and Freedom Poles, are commemorating the third crash site of 9-11 at the Pentagon. The totems have begun their cross-country journey. Some of the carvers and a few veterans are escorting them. How do the Lummi people hope to heal a wounded nation? Can the country allow healing through native culture? You want this way? Do you want some dinner? Harvey goes out on Sunday. Sunday evening. That's Michael's job. This morning. Make sure he cleans his room all the time. Huh? This morning. Order him around like you're the dad here. Um, you can go anywhere I want this house locked up. Because the drug dealer's next door. This my food. And the attack was on the eastern seaboard, and so 13 tail feathers, which is uh, typical of the U.S. representative representation of the eagle. Mm -hmm. So eastern seaboard flight 77. Both males and females perished in the attack, so we have the female eagle and the male eagle. So Kurt Russo, yeah, did you call? Holy shit, how big is this damn trailer you're renting? My name is Barbara Stillaric, and I live in Bellingham, and I'm a member of an aviation organization. And seven of us worked at the Pentagon Family Assistance Center from our organization uh, following the disaster. And I connected them to the Lummies, and these two members here are, worked with me at the Pentagon, and they're coming out to take the journey with us. Okay. One last thing before we break up, which is, um, I think each year the trips have been a little bit longer, and this is the longest trip we've made in terms of number of days, and the longest number of miles, and the most number of people. And I think it's going to take, I mean, everyone's got to just, you know, every trip there's been little bits of this, but basically we travel really well together. And I think right around the middle of the trip, you know, it's just going to be, we're really going to have to work together. It's going to be a long trip. It's going to be really tiring, but it's going to be really great. It's just, I was thinking the other day, you know, 24 days, you know, 18 people, 4,800 miles. Can I ask a question now? Now, I have prepared some gifts uh, for the people we've worked with in D.C. They're very special, and it has to do with a connection from Chief Seattle to them. I thought they might like to have this Quit a minute in now. their excuse office. Me, excuse and me. they're wrapped, and I don't know I don't know if we all have room to... I don't think I'm going to be able to get all ten boxes in my car. You know, I'm, I just, I'm kind of curious, what uh, you said about Chief Seattle? What's, uh, it's a, something that he wrote that I used as a gift. Okay. So These people back in Washington, okay. D.C. And they're all nicely framed and got a nice car to them. The reason I ask this is because I'm, I'm a member of the Squamish tribe. I'm a direct descendant of Chief Seal. I mean, direct mm -hmm. line. Right. I come they, directly from They Chief know, the, these okay. people from D.C. know the connection. This is why it's such a special gift for those people, I think. Well, what are your thoughts? Okay. Never mind. Did you have something about this? Because I ran this by Kurt. Well, I was talking with Jewel. I didn't think a about while that. Ago. So. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's one of those, it's where is the eagle, isn't it? It's one of those presentations you often see. It's the letter to the, to the president. The letter to the president. Yeah, that one's been translated in every language. Yes, it's you see it around, I assume it would be okay as a public gift. It's very beautiful. Top of the morning to you. Are you Irish? 
the country with the polls I want to New York the healing poll for the children that lost their families in the Twin Towers then we went to Shakespeare in 2003 for the families that lost their loved ones on flight 93 when it crashed we cannot allow religion to divide us we're all human beings and children of God. And so, as carvers and painters, we just try to humbly create a symbol that it's okay to come together. It's okay to pray for healing. It's okay to ask for forgiveness. And it's okay to forgive. Heishka. Ha! Ha! I knew he was in a bad mood last night when that didn't even make him happy. I, I have a sandwich. Well, you? you want a sandwich? I've got a really good sandwich. No, I don't want one here. Do it's a really. Grab I didn't make it. No, no. I'm gonna go in there and no. see if they have Roast beef. Typically what, what happened is um, the, the speakers with this group include Jewel, the carver, mm -hmm. talking about the vision of the totems, right. and then Frank, talk about the significance of this for the veterans. For the veterans. And then if you have speakers from here that want to say a few words, right. and we, we uh, the, the blessing of here would be the event itself, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Jewel wants to do any kind of a blessing right. with, you know, we, we, or, if, we, or if you guys have. Well, we have you know, one, one, per, uh, Austin said he would like to do a song. Then that would be uh, He has a blessing. hand drum and he would like to do a song, yes. Consider that the blessing. The blessing, yeah. We're really honored to be here. In the first two years, Indian country came forward. Indian country is sending this across the country. And we went to New York because there's a lot of children that lost their parents in the Twin Towers. And each year, there are about 13 stops. And at all those stops, our Indian people, our Indian elders, our Indian nations came and they prayed. I don't want to know. Evidently, because they can't put that. I mean, if you look at, you know, you just start looking after a while, you can see that. Well, if we could get to our destination. How far is it from San Diego to, to San Alpine? To Alpine. What do we know? Did you look at the map? Yeah, we're we're we we're up we're going up the ascent. We've been ascending now for about 25 minutes. 20. We're we're in the rest area. Well, there were two rest. Were there two rest areas? Anyone notice? Frank. The first thing is we all stop and look at these memorials that people had made. It was just before Halloween 
and there was this little tiny carved pumpkin and it had this little note under it and it said for all you little children that will not see Halloween this year and this was after a day in that family assistance center well I lost it Ancestors or our ancestors are there. The spirit is there and they're working, helping us. And this is beginning to evolve as a, a beautiful work of world peace. Mm -hmm. Bigger than all of us could ever imagine. <laughs> yeah, we've been we've been on the road for uh, about since 8 o'clock, 8.30 this morning. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to set some traps and get him. Buy about a half a dozen of traps and bait them good. Yeah, it's about 105 degrees down here. State patrolman turn around. Is, is that? Yes. Yeah, Other than. State patrolman's turn around. I'm doing the firecracker outside. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, yeah, because I, I said that state patrol would turn it off ways back here. He goes, I do. So I said, just cut the white part out. <laughs> he's, he's cutting it. He goes, spoken like a true Indian. <laughs> I said, that's a good one. I said, no, no, I just need the sticky part. Are you ready? Um, maybe you could find out if you could film at 5:30. Yeah, let's go. Let's go do that so you know which part. Hurry, anybody along. This is uh, Fred Lane. He's our Fred, Lane, Lane Communications. How you doing? So he would like to talk to you about what's one he can film, uh, what parts. Okay, for morning time, you mean? Yeah, morning, yeah. I, I just was kind of curious about the 5:30. If it was, what, if what, if, part? what what we had talked about was is that um, um, these these dances that we're we're gonna do uh, first are our um, our. Um, our uh, Elder is going to come and he's going to come and bless it, yeah. and and then after that we're going to do a, what was called point dance. Point dance is a it's a, a blessing dance, and it hasn't been done for 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 50, 60 years, oh. and and as much as the number, and we have like 35, 35 women doing it. They they have to be of a high uh, elder. I'm not elder, but mature women. Uh -huh. yeah. So she's one of the dancers, but but. Uh, uh, at one time, our, we were we were sun worshippers, mm -hmm. and we fell favor out of the, the sun. So this was this dance was a, started hundreds of years back, and and it was done as a blessing dance and a thanks for all that was given to us by the sun. So it, it's, uh, it's something that's that's been held sacred mm -hmm. that uh, at that time. And then the next dance is going to be it's called the bluebird. And this is a it's a it's a dance for for uh, more or less. A, a thanks or a feeling, a good feeling of, of all that's come before us, and uh, and, and good good feelings, hap happiness, and and uh, prosperity, and all those things to 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 uh, go toward those poles and the blessing for those poles, mm. and for all of you that are traveling. So um, I'm gonna have to talk to them tomorrow morning to see if it will be okay. Oh yeah. Uh, Oh, my God. 
This is not at all an insult. This is actually a high compliment for me. But you know what you remind me of sometimes? One of those big sea tortoises. You just got a way. You got this way, you know? You, you just got this way of moving through the medium. <laughs> it's just, just... Afraid I would take it as an insult. Thanks, Fred. <laughs> Are you the mediator? <laughs> take it as an insult. <laughs> You must have been at the treaty thing. Yes. Really yeah. Marco Tio, 1855. <laughs> Got siphoned out of our land. Here is my beautiful double wide out here. <laughs> As you can see, you know, I still gotta build a foundation, you know. <laughs> Needs a little leveling, but you know, that's, that's my future. You know. laws on one side. <laughs> well, you know, only Indian could say that. I mean, you know. You know, that's just how we are. Okay. Someone said that with a fairgrounds yesterday. The fairgrounds, that was me. Oh, um, right now they're saying there's no room, mm -hmm. but uh, that could change. If we can't find a place, we'll put them at the fairgrounds. Have you seen the pools? Yeah. Okay. So you see the Is it just that one truck? Okay, all right, yeah. I thought it would be huger than that. What he's doing right now is introductions and so forth, my, my, my understanding. Okay, we're gonna go meet the president and all that. That's, this is my understanding. When he gets a better handle on what's going on, he'll come back and train it. Mr. Shirley, um, I'm Fort Ashley, Public Information Officer for the Fair Office. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in contact with Mr. Russo for the past uh, couple of weeks, but um, mm -hmm. they brought their totem poles with them, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with their trek across the nation to the mm -hmm. Pentagon you're going to set up. <coughs> uh, this is our third year on a totem pole journey, so it's the last part of a long, long journey, three mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. First year we went across the north, second year down the middle. Mm -hmm. This year we're going down uh, to the southern area here, and we're really Proud to be here at the Neville Nation. Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, I know personally I'm really proud to see the uh, leadership the Neville Nation has mm -hmm. asserted. In the, uh, the last two presidencies mm -hmm. have really gone national and international. Yes, sir. I think if I may say on behalf of the veterans that are traveling with us, what kind of a, mm -hmm. indeed a real honor for us to be here in this land. Mm -hmm. uh, we all, as fellow Marines, understand the plight of the Code Talkers and, and uh, what they've done for Indian people across the country mm -hmm. and for us to even be in the same area and mentioned in the same breath with him mm -hmm. is an honor that we just can't put into words, just a feeling mm -hmm. that we have. And for us to stand with him is going to be, makes chills run up my spine just thinking about mm -hmm. it. I notice your, your plaque back there about uh, the, the gift of freedom mm -hmm. is, is so true with veterans and, and uh, we, we appreciate mm -hmm. everything you guys do. And mm -hmm. Having us here, we, we thank you so much for all of that. Thank you. You look very much forward to tomorrow. To be, you know, I guess you're going to be part of the festivities there at the opening ceremonies. I'm very much looking forward to that. Thank you. Well, again, it's an honor that, that you're here. Um, of course, like 
many natives out there. We have our Navajo people who are soldiers right now serving in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other parts of the world. Of course, the wars that are going on right now, a lot of it is because of what had happened back in September 11, 2001. This is where you're going to be visiting. I want to wish you well on behalf of the people and have a safe journey getting there. And I'll be looking forward to being a, taking part with you tomorrow in opening our nation. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Sure. Yeah. I want to give you a token of our appreciation for you being here, visiting my office. Uh, we'll be up there with our little seal. The seal denotes our way of life. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, I mean, overall, given the, the complexity of these personalities and the cross-cultural dimension and everything else, it's worked out pretty well. There hasn't been anything... Well, there just, down the, just down the West Coast, I had to say there was a little bit of tension there, but... <laughs> no, were there tensions? I didn't notice any tensions. I didn't notice that. <laughs> Those guys are born down range. This experience in Texas is better than my last year, too, than this. Don has one hour to eat 72 ounces. That's four and a half pounds of prime Texas top sirloin. With that, he must see the salad, baked potato, shrimp, cocktail, and a dinner roll. And if he does this in an hour, Don will become the newest member of Texas' most exclusive club, the 72-ounce steak club. Please do not get on stage. We don't want anyone to get bitten tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give Don a little round of big text and encouragement. We're honored tonight to have some folks with us who, have, who are Native Americans that have worked on a memorial for the children of those who lost family because without our kids, we are nothing. I would like to introduce to you tonight, Jewel James, who has worked on this. I think it's something that you have to uh, really implant in your mind and your heart. While we were there, we were looking at the scar, and they found the remains of a baby plastered against the wall of the building across the street. And they still have the dogs going through. But something I'll never forget, it's something that struck the heart, made me just want to sob right where we stood. But more importantly, we come to understand and we realize it can happen here. It can come to our shores. And so we have to appreciate the men and women that sacrifice on a regular basis and come back as our veterans. And the reason is that sovereign governments, when they declare war, consume their young. And how they do that is they send them off as soldiers. They return, they, when they become soldiers, they become POWs, MIAs, WIAs, and they return as veterans. And those veterans are walking amongst us. They paid the price for our liberty. They paid the price for our freedom. They paid the price to, to preserve our concept of a sovereign people. And so some people ask, well, why is Native America so concerned? We have over 500 Indian nations, and 60% of the tribal uh, councils are composed of veterans. We believe in sovereignty, we believe in sacred, and we believe in the United States. We believe that we all have the right to exist side by side. And so with that, we hope that uh, uh, something we said, uh, you heard, you can take home with you. Heiska. I was concerned about not getting quick enough. That's a little dry. It's taking a lot of chewing. Yeah, let me get you another coat, and I'll get you a box, and you can take that with you. I'll take this part of it.
Tomorrow's September 11th. Right. And so before other people get there, we'd like this whole group to kind of be around the pole and kind of remember, reflect, speak your thoughts about why we're here. I mean, this this is us, right? And I think that it's a view of some people that a trip this long, we're now in our 10th day, we begin to kind of weave away, away from each other and into each other. And Well, and tomorrow's the 11th, so it's... Uh, it's been three years, this is the third poll, so I thought we'd do that. Frank, did you have anything you wanted to say tonight to the group about tomorrow or the next day? Well, we need to get together and just rejuvenate ourselves, re-energize re ourselves around that poll. We re-establish our vision, get back on track, figure out where we're at. I guess I have something, not a real bad headache. Over. Then now uh, we turn TV on and there's, there's a special Bulliani was being reviewed. And uh, he pointed out that over 300 uniformed people perished in uh, Twin Towers. Went in to save lives. 3,047 people from 83 different countries died in the Twin Towers. 3,251 children were left without a parent. My wife and I cried. That's the grief we're talking about. I feel bad when uh, people get attitude. I feel bad when uh, individuals think their feelings are hurt. When they think that they're not being included in uh, decision making. I feel bad if uh, you think you're being insulted. I feel bad because uh, I don't think Fred's treated right. He's 72. He's built coffins for everybody, every family in Lummi. And he's put more hours into these polls than Charlie and I. And he's there every day. And I only hear him say good things. It's not about ego. It's about just doing the job. You know, when you, when you lose somebody, you begin to forget the time and the day. It just builds up. Where you don't feel good. You can't remember why. Until somebody reminds you. Then it kind of shocks you again. I don't you know how veterans feel. That Vincent's on in combat. That Vincent's on that last after he would die. No, I held my shoulder, but I'm tired of your, your anger. Because you, know? you have to heal, I have to heal. When you talk to me, you got to remember you're talking to a man, you're not talking to a punk kid. You know? And uh, I held my kids when they died. So no, don't don't that. bring that stuff up. I'm just yeah, but I'm expressing the good thing. Don't don't act like I don't understand. No, no, you back off. Man to man, I'll stand up to you anytime. I relive it every day. All right. You don't want me on this journey. I can leave you right now. I didn't say that. I'm just saying that you got PTSD, so do I. So don't think that it's any more or any worse because I am still pissed about people that took my kids away from me. And I am looking for somebody to fuck with that memory. And if, that, if you want that to be you, I'd be happy. You know, you're used to getting in people's face, you know, and getting away with that. I think you've got to work on your healing, too. Sure. Because I don't, I, you know, well, I, I, I'm pissed. I'll, I'll leave right now. I'm going to go.
Come on, Frank. Frank. Uh, don't act, Frank. Don't act like that. Frank. 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 We're all together. Frank. It's just the way you say stuff, Frank. You know it. It's the you, way you say it. You think you're immune from that? You no, think I that know what it. you say doesn't no, bother I'm, me? I'm not saying that yet. Okay. You can go if you want. I'm not going to hold you back, and I'm not going to beg you to say it. You say that me, too, as well. I don't have, I'm not supposed to have feelings. I'm not supposed to say something. Huh? What am I supposed to be, just a, a puppet in the back and follow well, the leader? vice versa. Huh? Well, turn it around. Go ahead. I'm not going to argue with you about it. Well, there's, there's things that are going on here that I don't appreciate. We know it. Why can't we just let those little things roll off from us? I don't understand. It hurts me. They are. They're grown men and they're going to do it. Well, first off, I guess I could apologize to everybody for anything that I've done. Everybody, I know Fred, that the words hurt you deep, and I'm sorry. I apologize. How do I explain my anger? I don't know how to, how to put this into words. The only thing I can, and I don't make excuses for it, I'm a, I'm a combat vet. I've been to Vietnam. I saw more death and dying than most people could have seen. I killed a lot of people in my arms when I died, and I more blood in my hands than most people can believe. That anger sometimes is the best of me. I, I lose control sometimes. For that, I apologize. I would never, in my wildest imagination, do anything to hurt you or the mean men of this family. I mean, I'm the heart. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Frank, I want to say also that, um, you know, we went into the sweat lodge the other day. It's probably one of the hottest I've ever been in, maybe 80 to 100 rocks. Six nations were in there, and I hope they let it all go. But, uh, Grief, as you know, when you lose someone, hides way down deep, looks to the heart, and uh, you kind of wait for a reason to let it out when you're angry. And then, whoa, I've been healing through this stuff, but uh, I'm still angry. I'll probably never not be angry. I'll probably always do things that have to do with prayer to get me through, and that gets me through most of the year. And, uh, Frank and I are alike. We look at each other in the face, and we detect anything that's at odds. We get, we can, we know what each other's thinking almost because we're thinking the same thing, you know, and that this led to this. Wasn't anticipated. I love Frank, and I'm really proud of the veterans. Always have been, you know. And uh, I think uh, watching that special just woke up my anger, you know. And uh, I thought I was okay coming out of the room, but I was full of anger, and I'm sorry. And uh, I look forward to Earl. Where we could maybe have somebody lead us in a prayer. So, I should go.
planes pounded a suspected hideout of Al-Qaeda like elephants in Fallujah. It's funny, you know, people think how old this is. It's really not that old. But think about Simiyama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 20 time, 25 times older than this. Wow, can you imagine being on this battlefield like this? And you didn't know where your enemy was? And here you are, all Americans, and you're pretending you had an enemy. Fighting over this land. And you've been fighting for already for two years. The Gettysburg Address. This is where Lincoln gave that famous address. Reynolds Avenue. He wrote the Gettysburg Address in the back of a napkin on a train riding to Gettysburg. After the war was over or before? After. After? And he came here and delivered that speech. It's so sad. Four score you know? and Yesterday seven years when we got here, I never felt this way, but you know, it's so sad. You know, fog. I think it starts four score and seven years ago. Our fathers, our forefathers, someone here probably knows how it goes. So this little spot here was built for the 1938 anniversary of the battle. So, but it was just before the Second World War, so it's always been kind of ironic to pray for peace and then, yes. you know, get caught up in the war right away. So, The battle here left many wounded, many memories of fathers and brothers that could no longer walk the earth. We can only pray that our journey to gather prayers along the route will succeed. Perhaps not to heal the veteran, maybe to heal one of their children. When they come to understand what their fathers and mothers have been through and why they have such a wounded heart. War is not the answer. We're not pro-Archon. We're simply stating a truth that peace and harmony and balance and love amongst nations is the most cherished gift that each and every one of us is born with and seeks throughout the rest of our journey on this earth. Thank you. Aishka. The latest suicide attack in Baghdad has left at least five people dead. The attacker set off an explosives near a row of police cars blocking off a bridge today. It is the second car bombing this week aimed at Baghdad police forces. Meanwhile, U.S. airstrikes earlier in the day killed at least 44 people in Fallujah. U.S. and European negotiators are demanding that Iran suspend all uranium enrichment activities until November to meet the conditions. However, it includes language that could allow Iran to continue some nuclear activities. Resolution recognizes. Come on, guys. Here we go. Take the, the long piece off first, set that over in the apartment. Yeah. 
today after that nightmarish getting here and all in it, but when those squad cars showed up and embraced that totem pole, I was in tears. That's the most amazing thing to look up there and see the police you know, escorting those totem poles both sides and on the side. Sure, the bridge. I mean, you get them up, you can't, we haven't really seen them until they take those folds off the eyes, you know, and stand them up. Then they really, then they just really literally come to life. And they've had those under floodlights, it's just amazing. So this all started October 24th. October 24th, we wrote a letter to Don Rumsfeld, and we suggested doing these totem poles. And I remember Daryl signing this letter going, what? You wrote a letter to Don Rumsfeld? <laughs> <laughs> when, were, when were the native So we talk about providing a context. When these poles go up, it's like when you look at them, go, oh, they're beautiful. But they're just invested with huge amount of spirituality that went into these poles. And I think this sort of comes out when they stood up. And it's like when they take those, they take those things off the eyes, it's real. setting it down so then they can do the top checks. Okay, because I'm going to do that. I want to do it because it's day. Um, I don't want it going out of the lines too much. Huh? I don't want it to be going out of the lines too much, but I'll touch that up and that. I'm going to go back. Mm -hmm. This one is locked. Yeah, um, what we're going to have to do is probably touch up, paint it. It's on the other side. It's on the other side? Yeah, right on the other side. Over there? Yeah. It's where that hit? Yeah.
Our youngest artist was two and a half. Really? <laughs> and, and what did he do? She... He, he took the paint brushes and painted the spots that weren't supposed to be painted. <laughs> Spirit has given us a great day, a great Native American day. I am Ray Dubois, and as Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld's Director of Administration and Management, I welcome you on his behalf to this historic occasion. I am honored to receive these totem poles on behalf of all who work here and all who died here on that fateful day three years ago. These poles were, scarefully cra were skillfully crafted, excuse me, by the hand of James Prangwolf, Jewel James Prangwolf, councilman and master carver of the Lummi Nation. Jewel, your gift of artistry ought to be recognized as a national treasure. And first, it is with great honor that I introduce the representative of the President of the United States, Secretary of Interior, Gail Norton. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Secretary Norton. Thank you, Director DeBrock. I am honored to welcome you and to accept these living memorials from the Lummi Nation on behalf of a grateful president and the United States. The totem poles represent more than a shared mourning. They represent a shared promise to pass on the memory and the spirit they represent. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jim J. I, I can only grab my son and cry harder. Because how can you not be moved by such sacrifice? How can you not reflect upon the men and women in uniform, policemen, firemen, EMT? How can we not reflect upon the fact that sovereignty is not free? Liberty is not free. Freedom's not free. It's paid at the price of someone else. And so we wanted to remember the veterans, the men and women serving in armed duty. Because our nation was attacked. And 3,047 adults died, men and women, that day. How can we not grieve? The National Navajo have already lost three men in active duty. The Cherokee have lost three on active duty. They believe in the concept of liberty and freedom, the freedom to choose our own leadership and remove them, the liberty to practice our own native beliefs or our own form of organized religion. It's a symbol. It's a symbol of something that each and every one of us have within us. We have the power to heal. We have the power to love each other. We have the power to unite. Don't make a mistake and think that that totem pole is a sacred thing. It's the sacredness of love joining us together. And we pray that we'll never forget the firemen, the policemen, the EMTs, and the veterans because there are heroes amongst us. All we gotta do is look, but more importantly, let's continue to pray for those children that have lost their parents because 3,257 children didn't have a parent come home that day. This is a gift to all those families that are in grief and I know we're all here to pray for them and we can't interpret a symbol. That's for each and every one of us to find in our private moment when we take time to meditate and pray for healing. Aishka.
First of all, Tobani Wamiski Tampak, Lomination, Nisnatea Noizawong. The Deputy Secretary of Defense, Paul Wolfowitz, and I have traveled various times to various places around the world to include Iraq. I watch him as he greets the soldiers, as he talks to the folks out there, as we call it, downrange. And I suspect at this time he knows that this is the greatest moment of his public service. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Deputy Secretary of Defense Paul Wolfowitz. Thank you, Ray, Secretary Norton, Tex Hall. Thanks to everyone who made the time to join us for this ceremony today. It's been a, a powerful ceremony. And judging from this magnificent weather, I think the Great Spirit is smiling down on us today. By the devotion and service of our men and women in uniform in Afghanistan and Iraq and in other places around the world, they are making America safer. In the process, they have also liberated 50 million people, most of the Muslims, from the cruelty of dictatorships that denied them those values of liberty and freedom. On 9-11, I doubt if anyone could have imagined that that would be one of the outcomes of the attack on America. Another unexpected outcome is the way that tragedy has brought Americans together. The terrorists didn't plan for that either. So Master Carver Jewell and all of you who participated, thank you once again for your gift to our nation. Thank you for honoring our countrymen and women who lost their lives on 9-11. Thank you for remembering our veterans and the brave servicemen and women who wear the uniform of the United States today. Thank you. And God bless you. And in the language of the Lummi, let me say, Aishka Siam, we one people in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you all for coming today. Please rise while we retire the colors.